This is a follow-up video for the Blazer R8 that I made uh, a couple years ago, I guess. I wanted to expand a little bit on the utility of this gun and how easy it is to change barrels and calibers. Uh, we did that last time. We went from a 30-06 to 270. This time, we're going to change it over to a varmint rifle, and that is a big selling point on this gun to me because I like to have one gun that I can do many things with. So, try to keep the introduction short here and get, get going. Now, this is how I carry the rifle around normally when I'm either uh, in the truck or whatever. So, it's a take apart gun. That makes a smaller package for traveling. Uh, you've got this nice case that comes with it. You can put all your parts in, make sure you don't lose anything. So, normally I have it in the 30 out 6 configuration. So, we're going to go ahead and put it together in that configuration, and then I'm going to show you how easy it is to change calibers. So, the first thing we're going to do is put the barrel on. We'll just take this little dust cover off here, lay it in our case. Now, the barrels look from first blush as pretty much all the same. So, that goes in here like that. The hex wrench that you need to uh, tighten it up is in the case. Now, in the process of this video, there's going to be something very distracting. My right hand's going to shake. I've got a medical condition that causes that. And uh, I'm going to get something about that done here before too long, but so far it doesn't affect my ability to uh, steady the gun. Someday it probably will, but right now I'm okay. So if you can get past that. All right, the barrel's on. That's 30 out 6 barrel. Uh, I have the open sights on this one in case I want to take the scope off and do some close-in work. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put the bolt in. Very easy. And, you know, you might kind of keep track of the time and see how long when I get to the barrel change operation it takes me to do that. So there's the barrel. This ingenious mechanism here is the trigger group. It just pops right in. And basically the gun's ready to go. Now, when you put the scope on it, if we're going to use the scope, that's already mounted on the scope mounts. The gun's ready to go. So, now I've decided that I want to go varmint hunting. And I'm going to change the gun. Now this can literally be done on the tailgated pickup truck. Uh, they done a lot, put a lot of thought into making everything so that any screws that you could possibly lose are captured so that you can't lose them, and uh, I like that. There's been a lot of people that have tried to make this interchangeable barrel thing work. Thompson, Contender, Encore, whoever they are. Uh, Sauer, I think, has a, a rifle with an interchangeable barrel. But all of those have, in my opinion, some, some problems. Blazer really thought this out. Now, I don't sell these things. I don't work for Blazer. I don't have to say nice things about them, but this is my favorite rifle and uh, it really works. Now what we don't know, I haven't shot this 204 barrel yet. We don't know if it's going to be accurate or not. So far, I've had good luck. The saw 6 barrel, the 270 barrel that I have for longer range stuff, uh, sighted in properly. Both those barrels will hit an egg at 100 yards. And the 270, I've consecutively hit an egg at 200 yards with that. So I'm due for a failure. And uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat things. We're going to go out to the range later on. We'll see how this dials in. Uh, it's got to beat my old Ruger 204, which is going to take some, uh, some doing because that thing will hit a quarter at 100 yards. But we'll see. Uh, a lot of it depends on how good a job I do mounting the scope and all that stuff. All right, so now we've decided that we're going to put this 204 barrel on here. First thing we want to do is open the bolt, take our wrench, and here's kind of where you can start timing. Six barrel is off. 
and I'll put the 204 barrel on. I've already got it mount the scope mount on the barrel. You don't have to leave it that way. You can take the scope off. I don't have a problem with that at all. Remember these screws are captured so you can't lose them. Now in the case of the 270 and the Out 6, we'd be done because the 270 is basically a neck down 30 Out 6 so there's no change to the magazine and there's no change to the bolt head. But the 204 is a little bit different. Alright, there's the barrel. Now I told you you don't have to leave the scope on. I don't have a problem with taking the scope off and putting it back on there because once I get it zeroed in I know from past experience that this scope is going to shoot in the same place it did before I took it off that's what they call repeatability and I've never seen another mount that does that now the military I'm sure has got some picking any type things in their sniper rifles that are repeatable they, they have to but uh, some of the stuff that I've tried doesn't work this works. Alright, we're not done yet. So what we're going to do is this little insert is held in by a couple little tabs right there. And I don't know what this stuff is. Uh, it's some kind of ballistic plastic or maybe something that uh, they use in the Glocks or whatever. So again, my hands shake a little bit, but that's out. Now we take the 204. Pop it in there, magazine. Yeah. We can load our 204 magazine for a total of five shells. And then, of course, that just pops. This is what's called the trigger group. It just pops in there like that, and we're ready to go. Almost ready to go. Since the 204 is such a small round, it requires a modification to the bolt head. As you can see, there's quite a bit of a difference in the diameter of those two shells. Now, normally that would be kind of a big deal, but really, on this gun, there's not much to it. I'm going to take the bolt out. That's a simple matter. Pushing this button right here, bolt comes right out. And we're going to lift up this little lever here and take the bolt head out. Now this is a, what they call a standard bolt head. This will work on a 30-06, 308, 270, uh, 25-06, a lot of things. Now I don't have the new bolt head yet. They sent the wrong one. So, but we'll pretend that this is a mini bolt head. The only difference is going to be this area right here is going to be a little bit smaller. So, we take the new mini bolt head when we get it, slide it in here, and there's kind of a trick to this. You can see right here, this has got to go in like that. And here's the trick. There's a little pin over here. And when you close this, You've got to line this up so that that lever will go in there and get it all the way closed so that this pin is flush. If you have trouble with that, all you've got to do is just take and push a little bit harder and that pin will stick right in. Now, reinsert your bolt, put your trigger group in, and the gun is now 204 if we had the correct bolt head, which I'm hoping UPS will bring later today. And we can go out to the range and test it. So, if this barrel turns out to be as accurate as I hope it will be, I've spent a lot of money and bought a nice night four scope, because I like the way the reticle was on it and the clarity and magnification of it. Then, I'm going to sell my buddy my 204. And it's against my religion to sell a good gun. Uh, that's why you don't really find a good used gun is because people hang on to ones that are good. They sell the stuff that they can't get dialed in. 
but I'm looking at the timer on the camera right now and I think I stopped it somewhere in the process there but it's on five minutes so in less than five minutes you can make a complete caliber change on this gun on the tailgate of your pickup truck and I think that's pretty cool especially when it's repeatable the way it is and you can take this gun apart and put it back together and it shoots right where it did that's to me is amazing so next thing is uh, waiting on the actually it's the FedEx guy and I hope he brings me that new uh, bolt head because it's a beautiful day the winds aren't blowing and uh, hopefully the next clip will be at the range well, during intermission there while we were waiting for the UPS guy, <laughs> my buddy uh, Bill got his truck stuck out in the, uh, the forest out there when he was trying to check his game cameras. That doesn't have anything to do with this video, but it's kind of funny, so I had to go pull him out. And uh, while I was doing that, the weather kind of took a change, so I don't know if we're going to get to the range today or not. Well, okay, the bolt head still hasn't come in. It got shipped to the post office box instead of the physical address, so hopefully it'll be in about noon today. So in the meantime, I'm just uh, getting ready to go to the range. Since I go overboard and spend too much money on good equipment, I've got to save money on other things, so I found that uh, paper plates work pretty good for targets. You get about 90 of them for a buck down at the dollar store, staple gun. And these things here aren't too expensive. Now what you want to do is, and this is just extra stuff while we're waiting, uh, is staple your paper plate below the top of the stake because you're going to pound that into the ground. Put the paper plate there then you knock it off. Sometimes. Now I know they sell all kinds of tripped up targets, shoot and see and all this kind of stuff, but I found that I can actually see the bullet hole on a white paper plate better than I can all that uh, expensive uh, high tech stuff. So, put these in the truck. Alright, this is what we've been waiting on. Uh, it's been a pretty good day so far today. I was so excited I woke up early and uh, Scout the dog and I went rabbit hunting with the air rifle and did pretty well. Got a jackrabbit at 54 yards and a cottontail and uh, a prairie dog that's evaded me for a while. So I got a good feeling about today's test. I think uh, maybe it's going to work. So give me a few seconds to set up things here where it are. It never fails. As I was saying, uh, we're at our secret location out here in the forest that everybody knows about. And uh, give me a couple seconds to get everything set up and then we'll get on with things. Alright, our day at the range is complete, and as you probably saw, our secret uh, range is not such a secret, but anyway, the people that showed up were nice enough, so I invited them to stay while I completed my testing. Um, results were good, uh, within limits, I would say, for me, which I, and I asked a lot. So, once I got the scope, uh, I had it bore sighted just by looking down the barrel and and that kind of thing. But once I got it uh, dialed in at 100 yards, here's what we came up with. So this is a five shot group. Now there's four shots there within half an inch. What happened here? Who knows? Wind must have kicked up or I pulled a shot or ammo. We were using Hornady factory ammo. Somebody almost loaded a little light. Who knows? 
but that's that's not bad even if you take the the furthers too that's still less than an inch group so one minute of angle if you take those three that are four there that's a half a minute angle but uh, groups don't mean squat unless they're hitting the bullseye so after uh, I kind of did some more testing then we did the uh, the quarter test now normally I'm good with a, a rifle hitting an egg at 100 yards but prairie dogs a small target so we want to be a little bit better than that so we did the quarter test now I have to admit these are not three consecutive shots that was the first time I hit the quarter and then I I had some fussing to do with that uh, night four scope to get it dialed in but once I got got that set and got it to where it would hit here I completely dis disassembled the rifle and showed the guy that uh, came up how you could uh, change caliber so we turned it back into a 30 out 6 he just happened to have a 30 out 6 so he had some rounds there I forgot to bring any and let him take a couple of shots with it and then I completely reassembled the gun in the 204 uh, category or configuration and I took one shot and by this time the wind had come up it was probably blowing about 10 miles an hour uh, direct crosswind and I did uh, allow for that a little bit and first shot out of the barrel with the, the gun reconfigured hit this quarter from 100 yards so I'm not done I still have to gain some confidence that it can do that first shot every time uh, but I think Bill's probably on the road to getting my old uh, Ruger Mark 2 or 3 or whatever it is and this Wazer is going to be good now I'm not going to get into the big caliber argument with you guys some of you love your 22 250s and your 20, uh, 220 Swifts and it, admittedly the 223 makes a lot of sense uh, just because of availability of ammo and uh, you want to get good stuff not cheap military Serbian crap but the 204 is a hot little number this 32 grain bullet comes out of the barrel at 4225 feet per second and that literally melts its way through this quarter and it'll do the same thing to steel targets so be careful uh, <laughs> shooting at your buddy's steel targets because you're probably going to weld a, a hole through it there's a lot of hype going on now about ethical shooting and all that crap I don't think we're doing anything different than we've always done nobody likes to see animals suffer and I can tell you if you hit them with this 204 it's not going to suffer the results are uh, dramatic I'm not going to show you any gun camera films of uh, prairie dogs blowing up or uh, anything like that because of the there's people out there that monitor this stuff As a matter of fact they make it their life's work to go through and complain and gripe and harass people about animals and that kind of thing but I'll I'll tell you that uh, the 204 is does the job the the results really are quite dramatic and one minute the prairie dog exists and the next second he does it you never knew what he did so if that's eth ethical hunting then it's a good round what else do I need to tell you there is one thing you need to know about the blazer. When you're shooting on the bench, sometimes you have a tendency to, especially if you're loading the rounds individually, to kind of baby that bolt. You put the shell in and you kind of slide the bolt gently closed. If you do that, there's a good chance that eventually you're going to run across a misfire. That bolt has to be all the way closed. It has to snap down. So don't baby that bolt. Uh, if you look on the internet you'll find some forums and stuff where people really complain about that and they worry about the gun not firing if they needed it to in a dangerous game situation or whatever but in those kind of hunting situations you're not going to baby the bolt you're going to slam that sucker shut and uh, as long as you do that the gun performs flawlessly so there you have it that's the 204 uh, accuracy report and uh, you saw how to change the gun over from a Hot 6 to a 204 in less than 5 minutes on the tailgate of your pickup truck and uh, I've had pretty good results with it so if you're looking for a gun that you can use for many things
comes off the shelf uh, accurate there's nothing to do to this gun you don't have to have it rebedded you don't have to do anything to trigger so it'll do it there you have it 100 yards